Okay. Good day and welcome to today's RevCon webinar. My name is Ronald Lee. I'm Vice President of Operations for Vuvio Technologies, and we're proud to be today's sponsor. And we're also proud to have one of our customers, a uh, special guest, Gabe Young from BASF. Our panelists for today's session, uh, Gabe Young, he's a learning and development coordinator with BASF, and he's got 20 years of experience in the learning and development competency as well as serving in other operational leadership uh, positions. Uh, Fran Montemur and myself have uh, over 70 combined years of manufacturing experience with the same company, and we've been in uh, senior leadership jobs uh, with the DuPont in the past. And Christian McDermott, our North America uh, manager, 13 years of uh, consulting and being in the Vuvio family, and he's our experts on the various tools. Great historian. Today's webinar, we're gonna talk and touch on uh, some of the challenges that the COVID-19 virus has uh, caused the industry. Uh, as you all know, coming into 2020, um, a digital initiative or transformation was probably something nice to do However, with the uh, COVID virus, we have um, okay, all- it's off of mute. It says mute. Someone is uh, not muted. Okay, I'll continue on. With the uh, COVID virus, of course, uh, we all must now a challenge to start to operationalize these type of digital initiatives in order to remain competitive and sustain uh, good manufacturing arrangements. So BASF will share several of their use cases with us today pertaining to how Vuvio has helped them improve their operational discipline, reduce unplanned events um, with the organization. They will also share why they adopted Vuvio and what some of the outcomes have been. This is a chart that's an, an industry, uh, it represents industry data. And uh, the chart kind of shows where that there's a lot of hidden plants and capacity in some of our facilities. And if you start to look at the OEE type of data showing downtime losses, you'll see that we allocate a lot of money, funds and capital projects toward robusting equipment but when you get right down to it and you start doing root cause failure analysis on the equipment, you'll see that most of the failures or the downtime is really due to poor operating practices, fail to follow procedures or inadequate competencies. And of course, a significant, significant amount of uh, variability from shift to shift. So really a key focus point ought to be, should be on that 23% that's caused by sometime human error. And it's not intentional or blatant. It's just cases where people just don't know and haven't been given access to the skills and knowledge. I will now turn the stage over to Christian McDermott, who will share with you our solution. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Ron. Um, so what I'm gonna show you now is, uh, hopefully everyone can see my screen. Um, uh, this will provide some context for the rest of the webinar uh, and also drive the discussion later in the Q&A. So, um, so what you're looking at right now is, is one of the things I want to show you. Uh, I'm going to show you three things today that our customers, including BASF, uh, and you'll hear from Gabe, use to solve some of these challenges that Ron mentioned. Uh, the first one is the digital replica. Uh, that's what you're looking at right now. Um, the second would be procedure simulators, uh, where you can practice and learn procedures. And the final thing is the field execution tool for assistance in the field while executing procedures. So let me start off with this. Uh, I'm using my laptop here, um, sitting uh, remotely. So I'm going to take my mouse and start walking through the digital replica. And this is a utilities complex. So um, 
And, and what's unique about this digital replica is it's built using real photographs um, and it creates this immersive realistic environment. So hopefully it's kind of smooth as we're transitioning through the images. Um, it is on my computer, um, but it is something you can share virtually on Teams or Zoom like we are right now. You, you basically have the freedom to move around the, um, the units or the process area. Um, you can turn around, you can look around, um, so it's your plant on the screen. And you'll notice now there are some green uh, boxes. So here you're, you're able to tag um, pieces of equipment, whether it's vessels or pumps uh, or components like these valves, um, control panels, things like that. Uh, there, there are labels or IDs that appear. Uh, and if you select one of these, you get a detailed view of that component. Um, and here, this is where I wanna bring in the simulation. So, so I can actually grab this valve with my mouse or my finger uh, and rotate it. Um, of course, wheel valves, you would rotate. Other types of valves or instruments um, also behave as they would in real life. So this lever valve I can open. Um, so there's a, um, a lot of um, capability in terms of being able to replicate the real functionality of equipment. So you'll see as I'm walking around, there's other pieces of equipment tagged and labeled. Um, and all of these, by the way, are listed in a searchable index. So operators or maintenance technicians can uh, select things in the index or you can search for things. So if I type in 99 here in the search box, I can select uh, one of these valves and it will take me straight to that location. So operators and maintenance technicians or anyone can find things independently um, without having to um, rely on others. And again, this is available 24 um, seven. So you, you, you'll see how this can be used for planning, you know, planning day-to-day -day activities, onboarding, lockout, tagouts, line breaks, or confined space strategies, um, you know, with, with all of this uh, available on your laptop or tablet. One other thing I want to show you is the, um, the what we call enhanced views. Now these can be embedded uh, all around the replica. Um, Gabe, uh, who, who you'll hear from later, has, um, uh, ha has several of these. So we can take a, an image and overlay the flows just by which I can activate by these icons at the bottom here. So I can select, uh, for example, condensate in the blue. I can switch it on and off. And um, there you have an unambiguous view of that system. Um, taking that a step further, that interactivity and those flows, if you have a complex manifold like we do here, um, I can activate the flows and the valves, uh, you'll see here, I've activated the va valves, and the labels as well, which you can organize in different um, ways. But notice when I take my mouse here in the bottom right, and I'm gonna click on this valve, you'll see that the flow now corresponds to the position of that valve. So um, again, it's an unambiguous representation of the real plant which has huge onboarding and refresher value. So this is all in the digital replica. Um, so the second part of this was procedure simulators. So this is what I'm gonna show you next. Um, and I'm gonna show you two things here. One is called the guided module, which you are looking at right now. Um, and the other one is a test module. But on the screen, let me just explain what you see. So you have the replica here on the right. You have your map or plot plan at the bottom, so you always know where you are. Uh, your procedure is on the left. So this would be BASF's procedure um, or anyone else's. We do not edit this or, 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 or create this. Uh, this is a PDF of that procedure. Above that, we have an action checklist. Now this is, um, uh, so operators focus on one action at a time because we, we, after all, we are simulating actions. 
So an example would be if, if your procedure says close all the drain valves and that's, and that's all it said, but there were 11 drain valves, we would have 11 line items up here. So you can do them in the correct sequence and you don't forget one of them. So let me do the first um, couple of steps here. I'm going to physically close this valve. So you're forced to interact. And once I've completed it, I'm going to confirm and it will move me to the next step of the procedure. Um, so it's very much like a virtual SME guiding you around. There, there, there are these um, uh, very useful knowledge transfer features here that you see called a knowledge snippet. So you can utilize these anywhere at any step in a procedure and embed that um, critical knowledge or that tribal knowledge, um, which may not be in the procedure. So you could even have a video in here or any multimedia content, uh, cautions, notes, that kind of thing. Um, so that knowledge from the 20, 30 year veterans is easily transferred to the new generation of operators coming in or maintenance technicians. Um, so I've completed that step and you'll see the system is going to walk me to the next step. Now, I'm not doing anything here, hence this is called the guided module. As I said, it's like a virtual SME. So it allows you to uh, practice and learn, you know, full startup procedures, full shutdown procedures, equipment swaps. Uh, things that they normally would not otherwise get to experience unless the actual situation occurs. So what about testing? So let me show you the testing module quickly. It is the same environment. You have the replica and the same setup. Uh, but here, you'll notice that if I start walking around the replica, I can walk freely around and basically interact with anything. So. I'm going to get immediate feedback on everything. So I'm going to show you what happens when I get something correct. So I'm going to open this or rather close this valve here and then confirm to the system that I've fully closed it. And you'll see in the bottom left, I get immediate feedback saying I got it right. So what if I make a mistake? So let me go down to where we were earlier in the digital replica and you'll, you'll see the valves here and I'm going to crack open that valve, which I showed you before. Crack it open a little bit and confirm. And you'll see again in the report, I get immediate feedback. I, I got it wrong uh, and it even logs which valve I interacted with, which was the wrong one. Um, you, you, you can continue, of course, with this error, but here I'm going to try it again um, using this link here in the bottom. And you'll notice when I get this one right now, um, the system actually logs. You'll see that I had two attempts here in the report. So the output of this test module, which is uh, really important, is you, you get a test uh, report with my performance. Uh, and also a detailed activity log of where I went you know, wrong or, or whatever. So you can uh, have a standardized way of testing on full procedures or, um, or even just sections of procedures, um, whatever, whatever is most valuable for you. And it's important to say you know, that simulation, it, it is proven. Uh, there's a lot of data that simulation and interacting with the real plant um, increases the rate of retention and builds competency faster. And you'll hear from uh, Fran and Gabe uh, from BASF later about how that, how that happens. Um, I'm just going to finish off with the field execution tool. Uh, we get a lot of um, uh, comments about this because can you use Vuvio in the field? Uh, and the answer is yes. So this is what you would have on a tablet or a phone in the field. Um, it is drawn from the digital replica and the simulators. So you have your action uh, at the top. So this is action number one of eight. And you have an image which shows you where that component is. Um, and if you want a close up of that valve or whatever it is, you just click on it 
and you get that close up. So if you're in the field, you have that last, you know, final confirmation. Yes, this is the right uh, step in the right um, location. And then you click the green button to move to step two. Um, you also have access to those knowledge snippets in the field. So, you know, if they're critical cautions or, or, or other things you need to be aware of, notes, they are accessible always in the field, just at the click of that button. Um, and you can also write notes as well. Um, if, if, uh, if, you, if you need to write a comment, um, let me just type something in and continue the, uh, the procedure. And at the end, I'll show you quickly, there's, a, there's an output, uh, a report, which um, contains all of that information. So you have the time, who, who it was completed by for each step, and you'll see in step three, my note. So that data can be extracted and, and, and organized however you wish, but it is there, it, it is captured. So with that, um, I want to pass it back to, um, to Fran, I believe, who's gonna talk about how customers utilize this and some of the results, and then we'll hear from Gabe from BSF. Okay, thank you, Christian. <clears throat> As Christian mentioned, I want to share some results that we have collected uh, with the implementations at our customers. This chart shows on the y-axis competency and on the x-axis time. And the, the brownish curve at the bottom is what we have found in industry is a traditional way of training operators or onboarding operators. And they go through an orientation, reading SOPs, and then a period of time of job shadowing and along with that job shadowing becomes the overtime associated with that, uh, that uh, training operator or SME. And then there's some type of field demonstration, written test at the end to complete qualification. With Vuvio, what we're finding is the operator is qualifying at about half the time, showing significant productivity gains. And the content that they are learning is uh, significantly greater, almost 2x what they're learning because they are learning the entire procedure. So the competency gains are, are double what they've been learning. So through access uh, to the operator 24 seven, independent of the SME's availability, they're able to learn this content and then demonstrate their capability using a standardized test. It's not dependent on one's knowledge, it's dependent on their knowledge of the procedure. The next chart shows specific data that we've gathered. The blue line is a range of data that we collected when we first deliver the project. When we deliver the project, we train the operators how to use Vuvio and then ask them to take a test on a procedure that they've already qualified on. And you can see from that data that test results range from the high 40s to 100%, a broad range and a score of less than 80, an average score of less than 80. We then ask those same operators to practice the simulations and then come back in two to three weeks and retest on those same procedures. And that is the brownish line that all of them scored above the site's passing score of 80 and the average score was up 94%. So again, the competency and the ability for that operator to practice on the standardized procedures showing benefits uh, once they use that. So with that, uh, share briefly some of our customers that we've been working with. And I'd like to turn it over to Gabe, who's gonna share the BASF experience. Hi, right, good morning, everyone. Um, I'd just like to uh, take a, a quick minute and take you through a, a journey uh, with BSF and Vuvio to talk a little bit about our experience and implementation. So back in 2017, I was tasked with enhancing our current five-phase operator training model and developing new ideas for interactive procedures. Uh, our historic training approach was more of a self-directed 
approach. We relied on operators' ability to read, comprehend numerous procedures, and Fran spoke on that on the previous slide. So as we started looking at this, we, we, we've noticed this, how society has changed significantly over the last 10 years. So when people are wanting some type of information quickly, first thing they're going to do, they want to Google it. They want to go to YouTube. I mean, this is the first thing that, that I do now. Um, so with the change in, in society, I mean, everything has gone digital. So we want to try to keep up with the times. So the ability to access specific information virtually or on demand, that's, that is the new norm. Uh, especially with the newer generation, the Generation Zs, everybody's grown up with some type of a, a device in their hand, whether it's an iPad or a phone or, or something like that. So what I did, the, the, the first thing I was approached with was, was video. So my director asked me, he says, purchase a video camera, let's start videoing uh, operators doing tasks, and we can train off of that. Well, I've done that years and years ago. I mean, really, to me, that's antiquated. So I started looking at several companies, what other digital options were there. And you can see from the chart here, you know, CAD, the digital twin, the video. Um, I mean, a lot of these, you know, the digital twins, there's no realistic to it. It's not really my plant. It's not my equipment. So even, as well as the video, if we're shooting videos, something changes, you have a, an MOC change, and you, you have to make the change in the plan, it, it, it's a lot to go back and, and change a video. So when I, when I ran across Vuvio and brought them in, the photorealism was just incredible. Uh, it was my plant, my equipment. Everything was uh, simulatable, and it was a it was easy to implement onto our current training platform. So, so once we partnered, partnered with Vuvio, I began, I began looking at building a business case. So when, when you start looking at building a business case for this new type digitalization, we really wanted to focus on our headache areas. So we looked at EHS performance, equipment reliability, the regulatory piece, our, our new hire onboarding, uh, three-year PSM refresher training. Uh, we wanted to improve our organizational knowledge transfer. I mean, having, um, having all the experience walking out of the door uh, and not having a way to really, a process to really capture that knowledge, to transfer it to newer employees. That was, that was a huge benefit. Uh, and then trying to standardize across our site. So standardizing across the site, across shifts where everyone was doing the same thing the same way and uh, the easiest, the fastest, the most profitable way. So Ron, if you'll swap over to that next slide. So as a site, we were looking at a call to action, and, and basically we really wanted to improve our equipment reliability, reduce downtime, maximize profitability, and a key part of that reliability strategy is the human component. So when you start really looking at equipment reliability uh, and downtime, how, how much of that is uh, associated with the, the human error component? So when we started digging into that, it, it's, it, it's a huge piece. So that's what we really wanted to focus as a, as a site. So this is where we wanted to implement Vuvio to help provide our DCS field operators with the right tools to reduce that downtime and improve on that equipment reliability strategy. Especially in the times we're in now, we need our equipment to run we don't we don't need the downtime anything that we can make we want to, we want everything running so and like i said we we also wanted a process to capture the knowledge of those experienced operators because with the way people are retiring and the turnover in the industry nowadays we really need that that knowledge to help train these new uh, new operators the newer generation coming in 
So by utilizing some of the knowledge snippets that uh, Christian showed during the demo, we were able to capture a lot of that knowledge and, and put those into the knowledge snippets and pass that on to our, our newer operators. Um, we also wanted our operators to feel more confident when they qualified. A lot of times a new operator qualifies, <clears throat> they haven't seen everything, they're not near as comfortable when they have to go uh, operate something that they did not get to see when they were training. So we wanted that, that confident piece. So <clears throat> using the video simulations and having them practice on these infrequent tasks and procedures that they don't get to see during their training, I mean, this was a huge piece for us. Um, we also want to be able to have them refresh. So when on, on critical procedures or tasks, if we're going to go into an outage, if we're going to go into shutting down of a piece of equipment that we don't do that often or starting up, we want to be able to sit down, have them go through, go through these modules, uh, supervisors sit down, share, make sure everybody's on the same page. Uh, so with that, uh, Ron, go to the next slide. So with that, we saw a lot of benefits. So just looking at our operator onboarding, so we reduced dependency on SMEs by 50%. So what does that mean? So we would take a subject matter expert and put with our new new operators and they would they would work with them and train them. Well, once we brought in the Buvio simulations, we cut that in half. Um, it was amazing how quick an operator could pick up a complicated piece of equipment and understand and be able to operate it that that much quicker. So we were able to cut 50% of that subject matter experts time. So if you look at that, depending on how many people you're hiring, that, that's a significant amount of money. Um, we also reduced our uh, unplanned events, startup delays, um, and savings. We're, I mean, we're looking at greater than 500000 a year uh, on our critical procedures. Just, just a few, <clears throat> some of our highlights. So we have a large cogeneration unit making steam, electricity. Um, and what we had seen prior to implementing some uh, simulations on this large, complicated piece of equipment. Uh, startup delays, having to bring in extra overtime because people didn't really understand the equipment. So you're, you're talking anywhere just in loss of steam, loss of electricity, anywhere 35000 to 50000 a day. So since we've been training using the new simulations, that has been – at, at zero. I mean, we have, we have saved a significant amount of money on that. Um, just a couple other examples. Uh, some of our rotating equipment, you know, blowers, we were experiencing several, several blower failures um, due to some human error pieces. Uh, you know, it could range anywhere from 120,000 to 150,000. Um, same thing with some of our high pressure feed pumps. So when you start looking at the reliability of your equipment and the savings per year and what we have seen since we have implemented, it is just phenomenal. So um, with, with that said, we're, we're continuing to look for new opportunities to implement Vuvio for training, uh, equipment reliability, for that increased profitability. So. Um, with that, I want to thank you for your time and hope I was able to provide a little bit of useful information. So with that quickly, just to summarize what Vuvio can deliver to a manufacturing environment uh, or plant site, it is the real plant. It is the operator's plant on the screen. It's accessible on any device and it's easy to scale and, and have to also mention it's easy to update with the way our plant sites are and a significant amount of change that occurs on a plant site on any given year, it, uh, any solution needs to be easy to update so we can maintain that plant site so the operators recognize it when they go out in the area. 
again, it's a virtual SME available all the time. It is not people dependent. It's on the, uh, on the network and ready for the operator to use it when they have time. It is proven to increase operator competency and give them the confidence to operate that piece of equipment that they have not operated in the past uh, due to equipment availability. Our system does provide documented testing, documented results. It's a great tool even for the three-year refresher training that's required by the regulatory agencies. And you can see the results. Uh, the overtime associated with the training and specialized call-ins, the reduced qualification timing, and even the uh, documented savings that Gabe shared around re, uh, reduction and elimination of unplanned downtime. So with that, uh, I believe we're ready for uh, questions. So thank you for your time and we welcome any questions. Mm -hmm.